the News Channel 5 Network. This is Titans Talk. Hey there, Titans Talk on your television. Steve Lehman here with you. Glad you are here with us on this Monday night on News Channel 5. Plus, Titans with a big win yesterday, albeit closer than a lot of people would have liked to have seen down the stretch. 27-21 over the Bears in Chicago. Tennessee improves to 6-6 six and six on the season and now are even with the first place Texans in the win column in the AFC South. So a huge moment for Tennessee as they now head into their bye week. Finally, after 12 consecutive games to start the season, Tennessee gets a bye, chance to sort of catch their breath, heal and get set for a four game stretch at the end of the season with a playoff trip, with the division title, all of that stuff on the line. Meaningful football games are ahead for the Titans after yesterday and it certainly was not pretty the defense nearly blowing a 20 point lead in the fourth quarter but when they had to make plays at the end they did with a goal line stand albeit they got some huge help with the Josh Bellamy drop there in the end zone on what should have been a touchdown Titans ultimately get the stop and they don't ask how they just ask how many and yesterday the Titans added one to the win ledger. And so they're now they're 6-6 six and six on the season, very much in the race in the AFC South. And when you look at the end of the year, four games left. If you go win them all, the Titans are going to win this division. If they go win every game left, including that game against the Texans in Week 17 right here in Nashville, the Titans are going to win the AFC South. If they win three of the games, they're going to have a shot. Anything less than that, they're not. And they're probably not going to go to the playoffs. Up until this point of the season, the Titans have been a 500 football team. That's obviously huge progress and strides from where they've been. But the question now is, are they good enough to take the next step? Because that's what they have to do. If they're going to get to the playoffs this year, they're going to have to string some wins together. The consistency has to come, and we'll see if they can do that. Part of that consistency is going to have to come in the defensive secondary. And that secondary was a brutal yesterday in Chicago. Matt Barkley, who was making his first ever NFL start, threw for over 300 yards. He threw for three touchdowns in the game. He didn't turn... Uh, uh, I mean, he absolutely went after those Titans secondary members. He didn't turn away from them. When you look at the interceptions that he threw. It was Wesley Woodyard, a linebacker, who steps in front of a ball to make a play. And it was Denora Searcy, a safety coming over on help to make a play in the end zone. Huge plays by the defense. Not great throws by Barkley, but once again, he wasn't a cornerback making the play. And when Jason McCourty went out with a knee injury, which is not severe, fortunately for the Titans, when he went out in the fourth quarter, they were in big-time trouble. Uh, Barkley went after Parrish Cox. He went after LaShawn Sims when he came in. He went after Valentino Blake. The Titans as a whole in the secondary could not cover what is really a pedestrian receiver core for the Bears. Without Alshon Jeffrey, there's nobody in that lineup that is a playmaker or a headline maker. And yesterday, they abused the Titans secondary. And today, the Titans made a move. A move that I think surprises a lot of people. They released Parrish Cox. Just outright released him. With four games left in the season. Cox is the guy who leads the team in interceptions and passes defended. Although, maybe you can look a little bit more into that because he is getting targeted so much by opposing teams that think he's a weak link. That they can go after him and that they can have success. And guess what? More times than not, they are. Cox, at this point, leads all NFL quarterbacks in receiving yards against. Essentially, he's the worst cornerback in the league right now by productivity and to make things worse when catches are made he's missed a league high 10 tackles by a cornerback 
So not just is he allowing guys to make the catch, but then when they do, he's not even wrapping them up the way he needs to. Cox has become a liability for this defense, and Mike Mularkey and John Robinson know it. He did not play well the last several weeks. And last week, there were a lot of questions about whether he would remain the starter. And Mike Malarkey said, no, we're going to keep confidence in him. We're going to go out there. We're going to let him do his job. We believe he can get it done. And he said today, he thought at the time, to throw somebody else in there, you really destroy the confidence of Cox. And you don't know what you're getting. But after watching him again on Sunday, the decision was essentially made that we're getting hurt too much by him being out there. We've got to make a move. And they still don't really know what they're going to get from the guys behind him. I mean, LaShawn Sims wasn't very good yesterday when he played for Cox at points. Kalen Reed has been on the practice squad. He hasn't played a single snap in a meaningful NFL game yet, let alone covered anybody. Valentino Blake has struggled in pass coverage this year. I think Bryce McCain's been very good in the slot. But I don't know if you can count on him outside. So there's a huge question mark there for the Titans right now in terms of who is going to step up and fill that void and give them real production. But it's clear that they had seen enough from Cox to know that he wasn't going to figure it out this year and that they just needed to move on and give some of these other guys an opportunity. I mean, Sims and Reed are both rookies. There probably will be some growing pains there, but... Hey, if they show progress, maybe there's a chance that they're the answer for the future, if not two weeks from now against Denver. I think that's ultimately the decision today. It's a bold move. You don't see this happen a lot with a month to go in a season for a team that's playing for a playoff berth. But I think the Titans feel the only way they get there is if that secondary starts to play better. Because remember, this is a copycat league. So a lot of teams are going to look at that film from yesterday and see Matt Barkley in his first NFL start throwing for 300 yards and three touchdowns and just finding more holes in the Titans secondary than in a block of Swiss cheese. I, I think you're going to see a lot of teams try to go after them in that way. I, I mean, think about it. First play of the game yesterday for Matt Barkley, they go deep. And they draw a pass interference penalty. That's how teams are going to go after this team. Until the Titans can prove that their secondary can stop teams consistently from throwing the football, they're going to go after them. And the other thing the Bears did yesterday, which was very effective, it was quick routes. They got the ball out in a hurry and didn't let the Titans pass rush get home. And that's the other issue is the Titans pass rush has been very good this year. It's been underrated in most people's eyes around the league. But these guys aren't Superman. They, they can't get there in a second and a half or two seconds. If teams are determined to get the ball out that quickly and not let them truly rush the passer, the secondary has to be able to cover for that long and not just get killed. And that was the problem yesterday. So again, Parrish Cox is out. Kalen Reed, Mr. Irrelevant, the final pick in the NFL draft last spring, promoted to the active roster. And now you're just going to see a rotation of guys from McCain to Valentino Blake to LaShawn Sims and Kalen Reed, opposite of Jason McCourty. And the Titans will see if they can figure out how to get a productive secondary on the field in this all-important final month of the season. We'll find out if they can do it. Your thoughts on the game yesterday, the way it went. Titans jumped to a big lead, 27-7. Marcus Mariota, terrific again. Two more touchdown passes. That's now eight consecutive weeks with a multi-touchdown game for Mariota. 23 touchdowns to three interceptions over the last eight weeks, I believe it is. 25 touchdown passes for the year. Just becomes the third guy in franchise history and the first Titans quarterback to do that. The other guys to do it for the franchise, Warren Moon and George Blanda, which is a pretty nice company to be in, of course. Titans jumped to that big lead, unable to really put it on the Bears in the second half, and then they got on their heels with that defense in the fourth quarter. Very fortunate to walk away with a win, but at the end of the day, 
Now, you sit here at 6-6 six and six and very much in a position to do some damage in December. And whatever you say about yesterday, some people say they flat out got lucky with the drop ball in the end zone in the fourth quarter. That's probably true. But at the end of the day, when you look at what the Titans have done so far this year, they're about where they should be. This has been very much an average 500, 6-6 six and six football team this year. If you want to say they were lucky yesterday, fine. If you want to say that the Detroit game they stole with two touchdowns in the fourth quarter, sure, I'll, I'll give you that. Maybe they stole a couple wins here. But they've also lost some games that they were probably the better team in. The vast majority of two of them against the Colts, where if it wasn't for just terrible starts or a brutal finish in the game here, they're probably the better team. Although it's very difficult to say that, I realize when you've lost 11 straight games to a team like Indianapolis. How about San Diego? You're down 19 nothing before you really wake up and figure out you're in California to play a football game. And from that point on, Titans were awesome, except for a couple turnovers from Mariota when they're trying to get back in the game. You've got the Minnesota game in week one where you have 17 points off turnovers that cost you a game that you end up losing by eight or nine. Ultimately, the Titans can point to several games that they feel like they've given away. Now maybe they got one back. Very much feels like a 6-6 six and six team, though. A 500 team that now heads to December and really needs to not be a 500 team. they got to be better than 500 this month. And if they do that, they're going to have a real good shot to win the AFC South, play in the playoffs for the first time since 2008. If they continue to play the way they've been, up and down, win, loss, win, loss. You know, they've alternated a win with a loss for seven consecutive weeks now. If that's the way they're going to continue to play, it's over. And 8-8 eight and eight is not going to do it, I don't think, in the AFC South. And the Titans are going to lose just about every tiebreaker since they lost the two games to the Colts, even if it's the Texans that they're tied with. You can't afford to be 8-8. Eight and eight. You can't afford to be 8-8 eight and eight in a tie. They're going to have to win at least three of these final four and beat the Texans. And the Jaguars is going to be a pretty key game, too, on Christmas Eve. If they can do that, they've got a shot. they got a shot to win the division. If not, we'll see. I want to hear from you tonight. Your thoughts on the game yesterday. Your thoughts on the move today with Parrish Cox and where the Titans go from here. 737-7767 is the number. Let's begin tonight with James. James, good evening. What's going on? Uh, we're doing pretty good, Steve. How are you? Doing well. Hey, man, I think that was a great move that, you know, John Robson, Malarkey, let Cox go. I think it's just making a statement to the team. Look, if you don't perform, you're out of here. You know, they didn't let Don play. They didn't activate him. I think they're making a point, and they need to. You know, if you don't perform, you get paid good enough money. If you don't perform, you're out of here. We'll go somewhere else. You know, I think if they're getting a the makeup of New England Patriots, John Robinson's brought that makeup from from up there to down here. I mean, up there, if you don't perform, I don't know how much money you get paid or how big of a name you got. If you don't perform, you don't play. Yeah. I think that's the direction that our team needs to go. And Marcus, man, is is phenomenal. You know, we got a team. I don't think we're good enough to go to no Super Bowl this year. We. We may make the playoffs if we get lucky. As far as being complete, total talent and dominant team, we're not there yet. But we're we short proof from last year. We got high hopes. We got a franchise quarterback. And I, I, you know, limit. It's just good, a good thing for the Titans right now. But I just don't think they got all the good. Cause, man, I watched the Kansas City and Denver game. Man, they were hitting, popping, running all over the field. And Titans just don't have that right now. I love my Titans, though. Yeah, no question. We appreciate the call, James. A uh, huge difference when you look at the Titans' defense, especially the way they played yesterday and what you saw in that game last night. Even as the teams were moving the ball in overtime and at the end of that game, those defenses were hitting. That was a physical good football game. And, oh, by the way, those are the next two Titans' opponents. Denver next weekend and then Kansas City December 18th in Kansas City. So you're, you're going to have to beat one of those teams at least. You're going to have to match them defensively. But, look, Marcus Mariota has been absolutely phenomenal for the Titans this year. He was again yesterday. It, it almost seems like he's better every time out with some of the throws that he made. 
Both touchdown passes yesterday came on third down. He is a remarkable 32 touchdowns to no interceptions in the red zone. That's the type of stuff you just cannot teach. And that is the type of stuff that Marcus Mariota is doing week in and week out right now for the Titans. So you feel really good about that. And you got to feel really good about the direction of this team because remember, this is a squad that won five games total the previous two years. They've won six now in 12 weeks. They're six and six. They won five games total the last two years. So this is obvious progress. The question now is from progress, from going from being the worst team in the NFL to an average 500 football team, can within one season the Titans now take that next step to being a good football team and a playoff team? Because that's going to take better than what they've done through three months. Through three months, they've done enough to put themselves in the conversation. It means that December brings meaningful football games to Tennessee for the first time in quite a little while. But to make those games actually mean something, they're going to have to raise their game yet again. Want to hear from you tonight? 737-7767 is the number. we got to take our first break. We're running behind. We'll get to your phone calls right after this, though. Stay tuned. More Titans talk on the way here on News Channel 5+. Plus.